friends welcome to today's video so today we are dealing with data sufficiency questions related to simple interest and compound interest so let's go to first question find the annual interest which a bank will pay on a principal of 50000 first statement is the interest is paid every 6 months second statement is the interest rate is 4 percentage so let me repeat the options option a Statement 1 alone is sufficient to answer the question. Option B. Statement 2 alone is sufficient to answer the question. Option C. Both the statements 1 and 2 are required to answer the question. Option D. Either A, either statement 1 or statement 2 is sufficient to answer the question. And option E. Neither statement 1 nor statement 2 are sufficient to answer the question. Now let us go to the question. We have to find out the annual interest which a bank will pay on a principal of 50,000. So since here specifically the interest is not given like whether it is compound interest. So we can assume that it is simple interest. If it is compound interest it will be specifically given in the question. So here we are asked to find out the simple interest annually for one year what is the simple interest principal is given it is 50,000. So first itself we can write down the formula for simple interest. The formula for simple interest is equal to PNR divided by 100. For solving data sufficiency questions, you must be thorough with all the formulas of all the sections. Then only you will be able to answer. So data sufficiency questions are very simple because you are not required to solve the problem. So you can save time there. You just require to say whether statement 1 and 2 are required or whether statement 1 is only required and so on. So the formula for simple interest is PNR divided by 100. So from the first statement what is given, the interest is paid every 6 months. So suppose we can say N is equal to 2. We have to take simple interest formula N, we have to take it as 2 because 2 6 months will be coming in 1 year and P is given 50,000 but we don't know what is R. So without knowing R, we will not be able to find the answer. So if 1 alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Now let us check statement 2. In statement 2 it is given the interest rate is 4 percentage. So simple interest is equal to PNR by 100. We are having P is equal to 50,000. We are having N is equal to 1. In the question itself it is given to find out the annual interest. So it means N is equal to 1 and R is equal to 4 percentage. So you are having all the three unknowns. You are having P, you are having capital N and you are having R. So you can easily find out simple interest from statement 2. So statement 2 alone is sufficient to answer the question. So B will be your option. Now question number 2. The price of a scooter is 50,000. What was the price of the scooter exactly 2 years ago? The first statement is the scooter's price depreciated by 10 percentage per year during this 2 year period. Second statement is Today the scooter's price is 1.21 times its price exactly 2 years ago. So what is the given question? It is given like the present price of a scooter is 50,000. So what was the price of the scooter exactly 2 years ago? And first statement what is given? Depreciation per year is given. The price of the scooter depreciated by 10 percentage per year during this 2 year period. So exactly 2 years ago let it be X. So the present price is 50,000. So what is the equation? You know that the price of the scooter presently will be equal to 2 years ago it was x. So x into 1 minus 10 by 100 the whole square. You can see these kind of questions in percentage uh, videos playlist also it will be there. In compound interest playlist also these kind of questions are there. So kindly go through uh, such videos to find out how to solve this problem. Here we just have to determine how many statements are enough to answer the question. From the first statement you can write the equation 50,000 is equal to x into 1 minus 10 by 100 the whole square where x is the price 2 years ago and each, each year the price depreciated by 10 percentage so you can tell x into 1 minus 10 by 100 the whole square is equal to 50,000 where 50,000 is the present price. So here only we are having only one unknown x is the only unknown. So you can easily find out answer to x from this equation. So from 1 you will be able to find a solution to the problem. Now second statement also you have to consider. Second statement is 
Today the scooter's price is 1.21 times its price exactly 2 years ago. So 50,000 is equal to 1.21x that is what is given. The scooter's price Vx 2 years ago. So 1.21x is equal to 50,000. So from the second equation also you can find the solution to the problem. What was the price of the scooter 2 years ago? So either from statement 1 or statement 2 you will be able to determine the answer. So your option will be option C. Either 1 or 2 are sufficient to answer the question. Third question is Ram deposit 2 amounts in a bank at 5% simple interest for 3 years and 5 years. Find the 2 amounts. First statement is difference between the interest is 600. Second statement is the two amounts are equal. Third statement is if the amounts were deposited at 5 percentage compound interest, the difference would have been 12,000. So here three statements are given and the different options available are option 1, only statement 1 and 2 are sufficient. Option 2, only 1 and 3 together are sufficient. Option 3, any two statements together are sufficient. Option 4, second statement and either 1 or 3 is sufficient. Option 5, all together are necessary. So now you can just try to analyze what is the question. Ram is depositing two amounts or there are two principles. The simple interest rate is same 5 percentage but the time periods are different. Ram is depositing two principles at 5 percentage simple interest for 3 years and 5 years. So you have to find out the two principles. So that is the given question. So what is first statement? Difference between the interest is 600. So let us try to find out the first statement. So interest 1, what is first interest? First interest will be equal to P1 into 5 by 100 into 3. And what about I2? Second interest is equal to P2 into 5 by 100 into 5. So it is given that I2 minus I1 is equal to 600. So you can say I1, I2 minus I1 or 600 is equal to. So 5 by 100 you can just take it as common. So 5P2 minus 3P1. So this is what is given in first statement. So from this first statement you will not be able to solve because there are two unknown variables P2 and P1. So you won't be able to find the answer. So first statement alone is not sufficient. So let us go to second statement. In second statement it is given that the two amounts are equal. That means P2 is equal to P1. Here amounts means it is actually the principles. P2 is equal to P1 means you can easily solve this. 600 is equal to 5 by 100 into 5P minus 3P. It is given that P1 equal to P2 is equal to P. So you can easily solve this. There is only one unknown. It is P and you can find out the two amounts. So 1 and 2 will be enough to answer the question but you have to analyze the third statement also. In third statement it is given that if the amounts were deposited at 5 percentage compound interest the difference would have been 12,000. So what is given 12,000 is equal to if the amounts were deposited at 5 percentage compound interest okay so let us say that uh, P1 is deposited at 5 percentage compound interest so the formula will be 1 plus 5 by 100 the whole raised to 3. Okay, since 5 will be a higher amount, I am writing here 5 minus P2 into 1 plus 5 by 100 the whole raised to 3. So, this will be the formula. Difference between the compound interest. If the amounts were deposited at 5 percentage compound interest, the difference would have been 12,000. So, the difference between the amounts received is 12,000 that is given. So, 12,000 will be the difference when P1 and P2 are deposited at compound interest. So, you are writing the formula for compound interest. So, P1 into 1 plus 5 by 100 the whole raised to 5 minus P2 into 1 plus 5 by 100 the whole cube. Here also you will not be able to determine the solution because there are two unknown variables P1 and P2. So, now, so now let us see that the two amounts are equal. So, the second statement we can see. The second statement the two amounts are equal means P1 is equal to P2. So, P1 is equal to P2 means you can easily solve this. P1 is equal to P2 is equal to P will come. So, there is only one unknown variable. So, from statement 3 you will be able to solve the answer. So, statement 2 and 3 is also sufficient to answer the question. So, 1 and 2 are sufficient to answer the question. 2 and 3 are also sufficient to answer the question. 
So one more case you have to check 1 and 3. So what about 1 and 3? From 1 you will be getting this formula 600 is equal to 5 by 100 into 5 P2 minus 3 P1. And from statement 3 you will be able to get this formula 12,000 is equal to P1 into 1 plus 5 by 100 the whole raised to 5 minus P2 into 1 plus 5 by 100 the whole cube. So you are having two unknown variables and you are having two equations. So you can easily solve the so you can easily solve the equations and find out P1 and P2 because we are having two equations and two unknown variables. So 1 and 3 also will be sufficient. So here what is our inference? Our inference is that 1 and 2 will be sufficient, 2 and 3 will be sufficient and 1 and 3 will be sufficient. So any two statements together are sufficient to solve the problem. So 3 will be your option. Any two statements together are sufficient. Thank you for watching.